Hi everyone, uh, I welcome you to my channel. Um, my name is Cody and I am a, well, I don't know what to call myself really. Um, I am a, I'm a prepper, I'm a survivalist. Um, I do a little bit of bushcraft, I do a little bit of, a little bit of all sorts when it comes to prepping and survival and stuff like that. <clears throat> um, but on a side note, um, I don't always believe um, these conspiracy theories and stuff like that. Um, I'm prepping um, for real life um, problems. Um, all you have to do is just watch the, watch the news and <clears throat> see all the problems in the world. Um, they can get worse. And they can go away. So, because I'm a prepper, doesn't mean that I'm going to wait for the world to blow up. Um, I'm, a, I'm a practical prepper in the sense of um, I look at real life situations. <coughs> anyway, so back to the video. Um, today I am um, kind of remaking uh, the video I've done the other day on my I call it freeze dried food <clears throat> um I've done a few little bit of few mistakes um let's open this up first let's open this up <clears throat> so before I do um I don't think I dehydrated this well um because when I checked on it this morning it kind of like clumped together and when I opened it up some of the some of the veg um were a little bit moist. Um so because I'm gonna have my machine on today anyway, I'm gonna put these back into the uh machine. <coughs> so um they should, uh, when you squeeze them, they should like literally disintegrate. Um, but this is this feels a bit squidgy, and it shouldn't feel squidgy. Yeah, they they shouldn't feel um, squidgy. They should be um, firm, and when you squeeze them, they should break. Yeah, they should break. So that one's alright, the peas are alright, but the runner beans they don't even the uh, carrot that it feels I don't know if you can see that on camera but it feels squidgy and it shouldn't feel squidgy. So somehow the moisture's got into um into this into this tub. Now there's two reasons why. Um, the actual tub itself, the inside could be could have been wet and I didn't realise that it was wet. Even the lid um, could have been wet without me realising. Um, and the other reason is it's not as airtight as I thought it would be and it's let the air in. Uh, the other um, theory is, is that because I had a problem with the machine, when I say the machine, the problem was with me, not with the machine, um, it didn't dehydrate properly. So, if you ever find um, that one of your tubs or what containers or whatever that is you're using um, has moisture inside, you can um, put it back in your on your tray and put it back in your dehydro um in the, back in your machine. Uh, the only time when you don't um put it back into your machine um is if uh, put that back on is if you look on like let, let's pretend this is full. <laughs> let's pretend this is full. If you look on like the side and you start to see mould 
on the side or if you start to see a mould on the actual um, item that you're dehydrating. If you see any kind of mould at all inside the uh, tub that you're using or whatever it is that you're using, throw away the item that you're dehydrating. You can keep hold of the tub. <coughs> You can keep hold of the tub but and, and clean it, but get rid of the food that's inside because um, you don't want to eat mouldy food. So they're going back in the tub. So just a recap, if it's just damp and you can feel moisture within the food, you can put it back in the machine. Um, whether it's uh, a day or two later, a week later, a month later, um, you can always put it back in the machine to finish it off. If you find mould within the container that you're using, throw the whole lot away, but you can reuse the uh, tub. Obviously, clean it properly, but you, can get work, work, but you can get away with keeping the tub. So hopefully I made that clear. I'm hoping that made uh, made sense. It is about six o'clock in the morning, six half six in the morning. I'm still tired. So that's that. So I'm gonna put those back in the machine. The other thing I want to talk to you guys about while I've got the camera on, I want to sneeze. So normally when I sneeze, but you can't. So the other thing I want to talk to you guys about is the, these white mats. With these white mats, um, they do come in different sizes, they do come in different shapes. If you find that the mat is too big for the um, tray, you can, um, if I can find them, uh, yeah, you can cut them to size. Um, at the moment, Um, I've cut them to size and I put them in a tub of, uh, of lukewarm water. Um, reason being is because I literally just bought them, they, they came yesterday. So give them a clean, um, give them a wash, cut them to size uh, and then they're good to go. Then you put your veg on top or your fruit on top of the mat and they won't fall through uh, the gap in between, which happened to me uh, the other day when I did this. So I want to, like I said, I want to stop the video here, guys, because I need to. No, I don't. No, I don't. About to say I need to blow my nose. Um, so I'm going to cut this, I'm going to turn the camera off, I'm going to cut this to size, give it a wash, set the tub over there, tub over there, I cut them to size and I put them in a uh, tub of water, um, just to give them a rinse off. Do because they look because they're new. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna turn off the camera, cut this to size, get myself ready for stage two of this uh, of this video. The other thing is, the other thing is, guys, before I turn off the camera, um, when you cut these, uh, when you cut these mats to to the size of your tray, if you need to, of course. Um, keep hold of keep hold of the leftovers. So all the bits that you cut off, um, keep hold of those. In this video, I'll show you what you can do uh, with these mats, or oh, the leftover of the mats. So I'll see you very shortly, guys. Bear with me. I'll see you shortly. So. Um, 
that's our video for stage two. And if you're like me and you've got a shoebox freezer, so your freezer is no bigger than a shoebox, you know that trying to keep um, stuff in there um, is not hard, but when you go shopping and you really fancy something different than what you've got in your freezer, trying to put it in your freezer is hard work. So, what I've done, or what I'm planning on doing, any fruit and frozen fruit and veggie that I buy, instead of putting it in the freezer, I'm going to dehydrate my fruit and veg. So this is, I'm going to dehydrate, de dehydrate? I think I said that right. Too early in the morning guys, I've had one cup of coffee this morning. Um, I'm going to dehydrate the rest of this packet, which is a mixed veg. The, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it in with the stuff that's already dry. Um, again, um, you can do that because you're dehydrating both of them at the same time, same temperature, the rest of it, which I'll tell you about later. Um, obviously I've got sweet corn and pea, so again, all of them are veg and you put them all in the same uh, machine at the same time. So let's try and sort this out so I can show you a little bit better. I don't want to keep cutting my video. It takes a hell of a lot of time to try and um, edit. So here is my trays that I that I set up. Don't mind if the mat if you bought these mats brand new and you wash them like I have, it doesn't matter if they're wet because the machine will help get rid of that moisture within uh, these mats. So let's start off with the ones I've already dehydrated and I'm going to con continue to add a little bit more time to these. And again guys, always rewash any types that you use. Um, just good hygiene practices more than anything. So again guys, you can see the difference between uh, the ones that have been dehydrated and the ones that I haven't, so you, you can see the difference uh, between both. So let's try and spread these out a bit. They will shrink. They will shrink, guys, so don't, um, don't panic. Don't panic, they will shrink. And as they're shrinking, guys, I'll give you a top tip. As these are shrinking, you can take them out the out the machine and just spread them out a bit more. So if you find they're big, big clumps, don't worry, because halfway through the process or during the process. You can take these trays out and just spread them out a little bit more. It doesn't really matter. Like I said, there is no right or wrong way here, guys. There's just ways of doing it. Now, I get, I totally get there's people out there that have a little bit of OCD, you know, ways, which I don't, you know, I don't have a problem with that. You know, you do you. Don't worry about what I'm doing, you just do you. So, yeah, so don't worry about what I'm doing, guys, you just do you. 
I'm just making a YouTube video on the way I do it. And if you guys can take tips away from this, you know, great. If you don't, and you just want to watch it as a, a good video, that's fine too. Yeah, that's fine too, guys. Same mistake I did last time. Alright, so let's do a bit of sweet corn. How many trays have got left? Got three trays. So let's do. Ooh, okay, let's do two, two trays of sweet corn. I see. Yeah, just spread them out. Actually, yeah. I've, well, I say I've got three trays. I do have three trays. But I just remember the top tray, like the first tray that I did. I kind of overfilled it. So I've only got two trays. So let's do two trays of sweet corn. So I'm going to tell you in a second, guys. Hold on. So another rule of thumb, as I've got this in my head, yeah, I tend to leave a gap around the edges because when you're putting it in and out of the machine, the, f uh, the mat or the fruit can get stuck on the side of the machine and then all your foods are all over the place. Um, I can't remember what, the, what I was going to say before that. Can't remember. It'll come to me. So this is, uh, yeah, a prepper way, or you don't have to be a prepper to dehydrate. You can dehydrate food just for the fun of it, you know. There's a, lot, there's a lot of people out there that are not preppers and just do this because it saves time and money. Well, it saves money because you're not wasting uh, any food. Of course, guys, when I decided to start prepping again, obviously I, I watched a few videos on on this, of course, because I'm still a beginner. Even though I've been a prepper for, well, since the end of 2012, beginning of 2013, Even though I've been a prepper since end of 2012, beginning of 2013, um, so I've been doing it for a few years. But there are a few things that I haven't done, like dehydrating food. Um, so yeah, so I don't mind learning from other people, whether they're preppers or not. So what I'm going to do, I do have a spare tray. But I've run out of space in the machine. I'll show you what the machine looks like. Actually, I'll show you now. I'll show you what the machine looks like now. So, let's get you down to the side So, with this top one, I don't know how well you can see the top tray, but the top one's a little bit over full. Um, 
again doesn't matter um, whether it's over full it'll dehydrate and it'll shrink um, the other ones are kind of like um, under, under fill just so I can get the, those other trays in so if you're doing it my way and you're using frozen veg um, to me and to other people this is what you call homemade freeze dried food um, what they make in the factories is probably a completely different way of doing it um, if, yeah, in the in the factories and whatnot, uh, they've got massive, massive, great big machines that actually properly do it freeze dried. Uh, they probably use um, uh, I can't remember the word. If you ever watch Terminator Two, uh, towards the end of the film, when the Terminator t uh, turns to ice, and I cannot remember the name of the. Um, things for liquid ice or something like that um, basically that's how they do it they drop the temperature really quick really quick um, and then they raise that temperature up really quick um, and that's kind of how kind of um, how they do it um, obviously I do not have those machines and clearly I do not have liquid ice there is a, a word for it, but I can't remember the name of it. I think it is called liquid ice or something like that. I don't have that kind of machine. I don't have that kind of money to buy that kind of machine. Um, so this is my way of freeze drying food. It's frozen and you'll quickly, well not quickly, but you'll bring it up to a quick temperature. So let's just shut that up. While I have got guys on. Uh, again I can't get the camera close enough so I have to zoom in so I apologize guys. So that's the timer. So it goes from off all the way around to 12 hours. Now my rule of thumb is regardless of what I'm doing, so regardless of what's in there, I put it up to 12 hours. Okay, I put it up to 12 hours. Top one, that's the temperature. 45C to 80C and you can adjust the temperature. Just below that, just here, there's a guide and that's all it is guys, is a guide. So on here, veg, uh, fruit, is 80C for 10 hours. Uh, veg, which I'm doing now, 70C at 7 hours and meat is 60C at 4 hours. So I'm doing um, veg. So I'll turn that down because I'm 80 at the moment. I'll turn it down to no, nope, I'll turn it up. Sorry, because I'm 40, 45. So I'll turn it around about 70 degrees, roughly. You can do higher. You can do lower. It doesn't really matter. Well, it does. If you turn it up higher a higher temperature, you'll find with your veg, it will have like a, a skin over the top of the veg, the outside of the veg will uh, dehydrate quicker than the veg, uh, than the inside of the veg, so you'll find that the moisture inside the veg uh, will still be wet, so try and do it between 60 and 70 C if you can, um, it doesn't matter if it goes beyond the 7 hours. If it takes you 12 hours, it takes you, it takes you 12 hours. So let's turn it on while I waffle. So number 12, 12 hours. So 12 hours, about 70, and you'll be all right. Um, yeah, so between 60 and 70 C. Um, obviously, the lower the temperature, the longer it will take. And this is the other thing I want to talk to you guys about. Um, if it takes 12 hours, it takes 12 hours. If it takes 7 hours, that's fine too. If it takes an hour, that's fine too. But the golden rule is to make sure that your 
whatever it is that you're doing is actually um, dry all the way through um, and again hopefully in this video um, I will show you that when you test these it should kind of like not turn to powder but it's like, uh, like some crisps if you take a crisp and crunch it in your hand it goes like flaky, crispy kind of like powdery consistency that's what you kind of want to go for so if you want to know roughly what it should look like crunch up a, a crisp in your hand and that's what the, uh, the veg should kind of do again depending on how it's cut um, so again later on in this video um, I think I showed you before in, what was in that tub um, it should disintegrate in your hand um, so yeah I'm going to stop the video here guys because I feel like I'm saying um and ah so I'll stop the video here and once I think of more stuff to say then I'll um, turn the camera back on way of doing it but it's very hard to do it one handed. You put all your drawers and they won't but to the grade they will but they won't sit they won't sit and slide all over your um all over your drawers. I could do the same with that one but again I'm not really worried about that one as such. sliding so if you find that you've got items in your cupboard that tend to slip um, put those mats in between which I'm going to do at some point today put them, it, them in, in between and you'll be fine they won't slip, in, slip anymore so there is always um, chances to reuse um, anything that's left over. So I'm hoping that makes sense to you all, what I've just said. So you can take these mats, line them in with your um, kitchen cupboards, stop things from uh, slipping and sliding. <coughs> now what, what I've got the camera on, guys. The reason why sense of dehydrating my food um, and not keep them in the freezer or the fridge or the cup or whatever. The reason being is because everything in my flat, and I mean literally everything, even my oven, um, is electric, electric pop, underneath is electric, um, everything. 
everything, even the, even the heating to heat this home is electric. Now, the way the world is at the moment, the way the weather is at the moment, um, apart from the odd day, um, it's rained. Apart from the, the odd week, it's rained. You know, what I mean by that, the odd week has been uh, sunny, um, the odd day has been sunny, but there have been more, so out of 365 days, there's been about 355 days, so there's been 355 days of rain, of rain, rain of some sort, whether it'll be a, uh, a 20 minute shower, or a couple of hours of rain, or all day rain. It's rained at some point for some duration of the time. Um, so everything is, is swamped. Everything's like um, either like a river or like a, like a swamp. Um, I knew that last Saturday. Um, today is Saturday, in case you're wondering. Um, last Saturday I went out to the woods. I had to make a video on that. And the whole woods were like either like a swamp or like a river. Um, so what happens if there was like a, a power cut and my whole home is electric and there's a power cut? All the stuff in my fridge and freezer um, will go rancid. Um, power cuts because of, fl because of flood does happen. Um, people out there say, oh no it doesn't happen, it does happen. If it's a flood, um, one of the things that will go will be the power, whether it be in your home or in the area. The other thing that will go is sewage, your sewage will back up. Um, and you'll have bodily fluids from both ends, floating around the streets, floating around your homes, etc. Um, so yeah, I don't want any of that, you know. The other reason, um, why I'm doing this is, uh, space. Like I said earlier in the video, um, I have a shoebox of a freezer. Um, the amount of times me and my partner said, do you have any, any room in the freezer? Probably not. Um, but we really fancy something different for dinner, but it's frozen. Doing it this way, doing what I'm doing, makes makes space in your freezer. Um, as well. So there's so many different reasons why, and again, your reason may be different for you, but for me, it's storage, storage space. For me, it's um, what happens if there's a flood and the power goes out, uh, or just the power goes out. I remember coming up um, when I first met my partner, I used to come up here every, I used to come up here every Saturday morning, I used to stay the night and go home Sunday. During the day, we would be fine, you can uh, use all the electric you wanted during the day. When it got to about four or five o'clock in the evening, the power would go out. Not just in the home, but like the whole street, there would be no power. In the whole street. And there were times when I went to bed that night with no power. Uh, wake up the next morning, next morning sometimes you have power. Next morning, um, you might not have power. Um, so yeah. It, it was annoying, so again, I've moved up from where I used to live, um, a town called Gosport in the UK, and I moved to where I am now. Um, and there, there have been times when there, there's been power cuts, but it was only for a couple of hours um, here and there. So again, guys, this is not me panicking. Oh, oh, oh no, oh, oh, oh. Was going to end. No, it's just a power cut. It could last twelve hours. 
it could last 24 hours, could last 48 hours, depending on, on why there's a power cut. So dehydrating your food is the best way because you don't need refrigeration, you don't need um, freezers. You just put them in an airtight air container, whack them in your cupboard. Um, they could last up to two years, again depending on your home, could last a lot longer. Um, so yeah, the other thing is, you see that white box on top of my... Uh, dehydrator, that's my dehydrator, white box on top. That is, um, that helps re remove any damp uh, within my kitchen. So I have that on anyway, whether I'm dehydrating or not, um, because this kitchen does get damp, um, especially first thing in the morning when everything's all shut up. So I have that on to help any moisture that's in the air um, and it helps. I like to think it helps with um, with the dehydration process of what I'm doing. You don't have to have one. Like I said, I've got it because of my kitchen being damp. Um, it's not been too bad this morning because um, I normally have condensation. I do apologise for a lengthy um, video. Um, if you like my videos, obviously give it a like, give my like, uh, videos a like. If you really are interested in what I do, um, hit that subscribe button. Um, and always please leave a comment. Um, I want this channel to be a friend friendly channel. I want it to be a family channel. So, what I mean by that is, is always leave a nice comment. If you've got nothing nice to say, don't say it. Um, only a nice, co nice comment, please. And if you've got any tips, again, always leave them in below. If I, if I can do it, then I will. Um, if I can't, if I, if I can do it, then I will. If I can't, then I won't. Um, but also, if you leave it a tip. I am, you know, best way to do this is to do it that way. Leave it in the comment because other people will read that comment and they may even do it themselves. So this is what I want the channel to be. I want it to be <coughs> people to interact in the, in, in the comments. I want people to say, hey, this is a good idea. Have you tried this? Um, and other people will read that and they may even do it themselves. So I want this channel to be like a, a share channel, like share your information, um, share your tips, share your information, um, and whatnot. So we are coming up to an hour in the uh, dehydration process, and it looks like everything's uh, starting to defrost. Beautiful. So, obviously, I haven't showed you guys, but they are starting to defrost. Um, so, once it starts defrosting, it should start drying. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you made it this far, there's still a lot more I can share in this video. Like I said, it's going to be a lengthy video, but I want to go through the stages. I don't want to be it to be a two-minute video. I want it to be a good length video so you guys can see pretty much start to finish um, in this video. So bear with me, there will be some more to come in this video.
Thanks for watching. See you far. So guys, just a, a top tip. Um, this is the um, dried chicken that I made oh, on this few days ago. It was last week. Um, and I have made a video on this. So this is the uh, dried chicken. It's got like a uh, Bombay um, spice. It's got barbecue spice. It's got tandoori spice. Cooked it up and I've dehydrated it. Now leaving it in a airtight container is fine, uh, but it won't last very long because of the uh, fat and the protein um, and all, all the oils and that that kind of stuff. So it only lasts maybe a couple of weeks, month maybe two months if you're lucky uh, in a container like this in your cupboard now if you want to make it last a bit longer um, get yourself a, a food bag now, most people use these to put your sandwiches in and stuff like that for work you can always you can freeze these bags um, and you can put the chicken inside Sometimes um, the so this is blue, so the colour blue will sometimes transfer onto the item that you're freezing. Again, that's just the um, the colour printed off. So again, it's up to you whether you want to um, eat it if that happens. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to transfer the chicken into here. Then I'm going to put it in the freezer. Reason being is because, like, like I just said, the fat will go uh, vancid. The fat will turn manky and after a while, even though you dehydrated it, it's more the fat that would ruin the meat instead of moisture. And freezing, freezing it will make it last a bit longer. Um, hoping I'm making sense, guys. Hoping I'm making sense. Um, when it comes to <clears throat> when it comes, to, so I'll say when it comes to meat. When it comes to meat, the only one I will avoid is pork. Uh, nothing wrong with pork in the way of dehydration, but pork will go off quicker because. We all know that pork is very fatty. Uh, chicken, beef, again, if you can kick all the oil and the fat out of it, it'll be all right. But yeah, I don't do pork anymore. Tried it once, never again. So when it comes to veg, like fruit and veg, so at the moment I've got sweet corn and mixed veg. Hopefully tomorrow I will do um, the, uh, my peas. Hopefully tomorrow. There you go, they're in the bag, um, ready to be put in the freezer. Um, again, guys, if you are uh, backpacking, if you're, um, I don't know, going out camping, uh, even if it's at, at, at a campsite, you're going camping, um, you can pack this in your backpack um, and you don't need refrigeration. This will be okay in your backpack. Um, again, depends on the weather, depending on um, how you're camping and all that. It should last within a week. Um, the only thing I would recommend if you're planning on going camping is putting this in a uh, container, airtight container. If you're planning on going camping, if you're planning on using this for for camping, and I would um, 
keep this separate from your other veg. So if you're planning on taking this and you're taking some veg with you as well, keep them separate. Because like I said, this will go rancid and it will turn your your veg um, horrible as well. So keep, always keep them separate. That's my rule of thumb. Keep any meat separate from your from your veg. Hoping I'm making sense. <laughs> um, again with fruit, uh, with fruit and veg. Again, it don't really matter if you put it in your cupboard, freezer, fridge. As long as you keep it airtight, and as long as you don't allow oxygen or moisture into the pot, you'll be fine. Again, guys, I'm hoping that what I've just said made sense. Sometimes I think to myself, did I make sense of what I said? Um, so yeah um, again if you've got a big freezer you can put those in the freezer doesn't matter but like I said I've got a shoe box freezer so put it in bags like this save some room so uh, oh and just an update on the I have to do some washing up let's use the washing up uh, some of this out the way somehow so some of them especially especially around the edges I don't know if you can see it on camera but especially around the edges as you can tell like around the edges here I'm starting to dry quicker and as they shrink, I can always faff around. So that's my. What I've done is just moved them around a bit. And uh, one's around the edges there, uh, drying quicker. The mats are working perfect, none of them have fallen through the tray, which is great. to stop opening up the uh, cupboard because uh, the hydrator because it won't work otherwise. Uh, another tip for you, for you guys as well. Uh, containers. <clears throat> like I said earlier, um, I wash my containers and put the fruit in. Obviously I've dried it put the fruit in, uh, the veg inside. I thought it was dry. So that's why I had to rehydrate the ones I made the other day because they're starting to get wet inside. Now, with this, if you touch it, it's not going to burn your hand. You, I can put my hand on top of here until the cows come home and I'm not going to burn my hand at all. But it is warm, okay? So if you washed your plastic container to put your food in, Obviously, let it drip dry, put it on top there, and it will dry uh, the plastic inside. And it'll. Then, when that is done, below, you can put them in the plastic containers. Again, hopefully, guys, I've made sense. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been up since half four, five o'clock. I've been awake, and it's half nine so I'm like a zombie um, I had about four cups of coffee this morning I'm still half asleep so um, I do apologise if I'm waffling on and I do apologise if I'm not making any sense um, but yeah again I'll see you in a couple of hours so guys and girls I'm back <laughs> um, sorry for the noise in the background with the washing machine and everything going on so it just means I'll just have to talk a bit louder so I just want to have a share a quick tip with you all I've got some I've had them for a while but I've got some uh, cannon jars now I have washed them up that's why they look a bit bubbly and I thought 
why not use we'll start using um, some of these instead of using plastic containers why not use my cannon jars so what I've done as you can tell I've got a big saucepan of water obviously it is on the go I just need to go and grab the tool real quick and I'll be back As always, guys, be prepared. Get yourself some uh, jar tongs, especially if you're taking bottles in and out of hot water. And very carefully, and this is where it probably go horribly wrong. Hope not. I'm hoping it will be fine. Now the temperature in the water is low. I don't have it bubbling, you know, hot. So I'm hoping it won't shatter the glass, I hope. So in the saucepan I can get three jars at a time. And basically what I'm trying to trying to do this way I might have to just do it that way. Right? And basically what I'm trying to do is in the in that saucepan is I washed them to get rid of any dirt and all I'm doing is sanitizing. So when it comes to sanitizing, it doesn't have to be a rolling boil of water water in. As long as the water's hot, it'll be fine. Keep it in there five, ten minutes, and then take it back out. Uh, can't leave them in there longer. If you wash them up, then put them in there. You don't have to like, put them in there for ten hours or anything. Just long enough for them to sanitise, and you'll be all right. So, as you can tell, guys, I have got. So as you can tell, now I've got a lot. So I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've got eleven uh, jars that I can use. Um, and I've got another box of 12. I know I've got a jar that I've used, but thank you, so that's fine. But I know I've got about two 12s of 24. Yeah, two 12s of 24. So I've got 24 jars that I can use. Um, again, there is going to be little bits of information I'll be sharing with you and make it into one big video. So this is just an idea. Um, so yeah, I'll be back soon with some more info so guys and girls this is the last uh, bit <coughs> the last bit of the uh, drawing I've got five trays down to two uh, so this is what it looks like
not to provide for the battery charge to the battery's rubbish. So the best way to find out whether these are done is if you just pick a couple, this is like a quality check kind of check, and if they're firm, I need a couple of nails, if they're firm and they like, um, the only way I can describe it is like, um, it's like a crisp. If you put a crisp, uh, a crisp in your hand and you break the crisp, crisp up, it should have that kind of effect. And when you do it, you shouldn't feel any, um, any moisture. That's the that's the silicone and the veg mixed veg. Again, go by the uh, raw beans, run the beans, whatever you want to call it. And they should just break in two. And again, you shouldn't feel any moisture at all. Same same with the peas. A bit like the um, sweet corn. You should be able to just. Uh, Get one between your fingers, and either they're very hard to break, or they should crunch up like a like a crisp, a crisp basically. So that's how you tell whether whether it's done. Just play around with them. You'll know whether they're done or not. You'll know whether they're done or not. <coughs> so I've got myself some mason jars. Uh, to be honest with you guys, I think I'm starting to get an ulcer on the side of my tongue. Um, oh, thought I'd just throw that in there. I've got myself some mason jars. Uh, there's 0.5, so about 500 mils. And that's what I'm going to use to store my um, stuff in. See whether I can get something the camera. And in theory, hold on guys. <coughs> So, hopefully, I'm just drying my little funnel. Hopefully, uh, these will last. Well, the health and safety and the government and all that will say um, no longer than two years if you vacuum pack your. Um, your seal on your on your jars. If you vacuum vacuum pack, they should last about two years. But again, depends on your home. Depends whether um, your home is damp or whether you live in a dry, warm environment. Just gonna make sure that <coughs> my funnel is completely dry. I know I had 12 hours to do this and didn't think about it. So the reason why I have to make sure my funnel is dry is I don't want that to get wet. Otherwise normally I wouldn't bother whether it's wet or dry. Right. That should just fit on top of the mason jar, just like that. And 
hopefully this is where I'm making a mess and all that hard work and effort I put in ends up all over the floor. I can't remember how how big the bag was, whether it's a one kilogram bag. Um, there is one way of finding out. When I, again, I should have looked beforehand. So what I'll do, I'll finish off what I'm doing and towards the end of the video, um, I'll let you know what I'll put up on the screen as a, a text uh, on the screen of how much um, these were. So the, the rule of thumb is try and get the food up to like a, the rim of the jar. So I'm kind of there. I'm kind of there. Um, put your lid on top. Now you can uh, vacuum seal these lids. These lids are designed to be vacuum sealed. But for now, just put it on top. Seal it up. And it's good to go. Now the other thing is, um, you can either do this every day, you can do it once a week. Um, but I would su suggest, as soon as you finish drying, check it every day <coughs> just to make sure that lid's on but if you hear this noise it means that it's dry so you do it against the glass it should like battle it means that it's dry if you see any moisture on the glass or if you see yeah, if you see any moisture in the glass um, you can put it back in your in your machine if you see any mould in the glass then empty what's in the jar in the bin. Keep the jar, of course. You can always reuse it, reuse the uh, jar. But yeah, get rid of the uh, content. But moisture, put it, just put it back in your machine, and that should last about two years, roughly. Same as the mixed veg, same process. Again, yeah, 500 mil. Uh, I say about 500. It's 0, 0 0.5, and there's still a bit of a gap. So I'll definitely vacuum seal. <coughs> I'll definitely vacuum seal uh, this jar because of the gap on it, uh, in it. So you got to remember um, if there's any gap between the food and the seal, um, that's oxygen. Oxygen has got moisture in it. And again, you're gonna. I'm. I'm gonna have problems keeping this one dry uh, because of the oxygen um, in it. <coughs> but one of those um, oxygen um, tablet thingy my box you can get. You can whack one of those in there. Would be a problem. But. Yep, it's on. And again, same noise. Yep, both. Nice and dry. And again, vacuum seal it lasts you about two years. Um, if you don't vacuum seal it, I'll say um, about a month, uh, maybe two. If 
be lucky. So for now, I'm going to wrap those uh, in my cupboard. Um, yeah. Uh, this is not quite the end of the video, um, just yet. Um, but yeah, that is, this is kind of like towards the end of the video. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. So guys, it is the next morning. Uh, this is Sunday morning. Um, and I'm just finishing off my video. Um, that I made yesterday, so I'm just going to try out some stuff and then I'll do the final bit of this video. <coughs> so, like I said yesterday, I'm not too sure what type of size these bags are. But then about 900 grams, or just over 900 grams. So, um, 900 grams can quite easily fit um, into a um, 0 0.5 litre jar easily. I've still got some room at the top there, which I can put this a lot when it dries into, into here, because I've still got some space at the top there. So that's what I'm doing today, just finishing off this, uh, finishing off this pack for the first week on. So almost a kilogram of um, sweet corn. I think I've got that right, kilogram. I don't know, it's too early in the morning. It's, it's uh, half past six in the morning. I'm still literally just got up. And I thought I need to, I need to finish off this video. Whatever happens, I need to finish off this video. Again guys, it don't have to be tidy, as long as it's on the tray. But yesterday I put too much on the tray. And... <sighs> it just didn't want to know. I was dehydrating for hours yesterday and it just didn't make a difference. It just didn't make a difference yesterday. So, but I got them done now, got them done within uh, 14, I think, 11, 14 hours, I've got them all done, so. So again with the peas, uh, 900 grams of just normal garden peas, which I'm going to do as well. I 
Feel easy, I can be a little bit, little bit of a pain today. I'm gonna wipe these straight in the machine. I'm not gonna overfill my machine, I'm just gonna do those over there. Yeah, I don't think I'll put too much um, on a tray. Because they're just going to keep slipping and sliding. So because I've done smaller trays today, because they keep rolling off the tray, and they should dry a little bit more quicker, but also they dry when they dry. <laughs> they dry when they dry, but they might dry a bit, bit, bit quicker, because they're smaller trays, or smaller portion, I should say, not smaller trays. Sometimes it's okay to do a little but often. So again, put them on a 12 hour setting. Put it on the veg, which is a 70C. Put these ones back in the freezer and I'll show you the last These are, obviously these are the ones I did yesterday, mixed veg and sweet corn. The mixed veg I've already done, I put a, a lid on it, and I've already vacuum sealed. This one, so, yeah, it's already been vacuum sealed, you can tell because it doesn't move when you push it in. This one, when you push the lid in, You should um, feel it go up and down, you should hear it make that funny noise. So, that's where this bad boy comes in. It's um, a, a handheld uh, vacuum, vacuum sealer. Even though I'm going to put the rest of that sweet corn in the, in the machine that's in there now, in here, I'm still going to do this anyway. So, we just put this on top. Make sure that seal is good. Yep. And 20 seconds on top. yesterday so I'll 
bought this yesterday knowing I'm not having a clue. That's just one of our ways of um, dehydrating when you're uh, sealing when you're dehydrating. Um, comes with a little tool and you just pop it open with the tool after you finished. Personally I think these are a lot cheaper, they're about 20 quid and I think they're a lot, a lot cheaper, they range from 20 to 30. Pound. And I think these are a lot cheaper and a lot in the long run and a lot better than those little squares you can get that you put in your jar. I think these are a lot better. So yeah, definitely worth the 20 quid. Um, oh yeah, so before I put that on charge, let's do the old test. Yeah, firm as, firm as anything. And like I said, I can always reopen this and put more in. And there you go. Oh yeah, put the, the thing top back on as well. Let's be safe and sound. And let's get this on charge. So I always put myself on charge, even if it's not charged when I bought it. Because... I don't want it died on you when you're trying to do your cannon. If you learnt anything from this video, again, um, feel free to leave a comment below, feel free to like, uh, feel free to subscribe. Um, it means a lot to me, guys, it really does. It means a lot to me when I see new subscribers and new uh, friendly comments. So anyway, I'm going to let you guys go, and I will see you all next time. And I've got a mouthful also. <laughs> I just realised I've got a mouthful also. Um, and I'll catch you all next time.